Hey guys, back after Easter this year, I did a series of videos regarding items that I got from my grandpa on dad's side of the family. Uh, they were starting to go through some of his stuff, and he's in the beginning stages of Alzheimer's. And uh, they're getting rid of stuff out in the barn they don't think anybody would want, and they were going to bring in a large dumpster and throw a lot of this stuff away if nobody wanted it. And, uh, you know, I like old tube radios and stuff like that, and books and vintage stuff, or crap as some people call it. And I uh, brought home a bunch of stuff back here after Easter. Well, today, for Christmas, we were down at the farm, and I got to go through what was left out in the barn and uh, brought some of it home. And a good majority of this stuff is magazines. And these were magazines Grandpa had down there. And probably some of you will remember these. The Electronic Technician and Dealers magazines from 1970. Some of these magazines are neat because of their advertising on the back. On a color TV service call, go buy the book. <laughs> RCA color TV service book. This is a radio electronics magazine from September of 1969. It's got some of them cool Nixie style displays there you could build from a kit. <laughs> That's kind of neat. I forget what all is even in here. Here's a radio electronics special stereo issue regarding a bunch of stereo items. Stereo color organ. It's the same thing. He's got two of them. How to fix bad collar on a TV. <laughs> New solid state TV rotors for turning your TV antenna. MOSFET circuits that you can build for power amplification. New and stereo cassettes for 1970. This was December of 1969, so do the math, 44, almost 45 years ago. We're talking about uh, scopes and sweeps and stuff like that. Tune circuit signals. <laughs> One of these I found had a really neat RCA uh, advertisement on the back for television tubes. Let's see if I can find it again. Uh, I'll pause the camera and I'll find it. I'll start back up. Here's the magazine I was telling you about. It's uh, advertising the 6LQ6 and the 6JE6C RCA. Uh, these are a horizontal deflection amplifier tube. It says, because we beat the heat, you can play it cool with the 6LQ6 or 6JE6C. It's got a tube floating in a glass ice water. <laughs> Kind of neat. And this was from uh, February of 1970. The steering wheel is a story I'll tell you in a minute. Something I actually kind of forgot about. It's in bad, bad shape. It's another box of books. These are called Popular Electronics from February of 1958. Hubba hubba. <laughs> There's a uh, electronics handbook. Kind of a neat looking book. Here's a uh, popular science TV radio manual. I don't know what else is in this box. I just kind of looked through it real quick. 
we were actually thinking about some of these books. Some of them are still in decent shape. Some of them are pretty gritty. About uh, maybe putting them on eBay and selling them because if not, they're just going to get thrown away. Your career in electronics. Like I said, Grandpa took TV courses back in the late 60s from the Retz College, and all this stuff inter, you know, interested him. And he was a smart enough guy that if computers hadn't come along, he probably would have figured out how to build his own before it was all over and done with. Not sure what else is down in here. More popular electronics. January 1956. <laughs> Pretty neat stuff. That's what that whole box is, just books. And now the story with the steering wheel. Back in 1992 when Grandma and Grandpa bought their farm, in the creek bank to the northwest of the house was a 1947 Studebaker pickup truck. And uh, somebody had run it in there years ago and it sat there and it was pretty rusted up. I remember that thing having a flathead six in it, I think is what it had. And uh, a couple years went by and they started cleaning up the creek bank and they pulled that out. But for a couple years as a kid I tried to get this steering wheel off of that Studebaker pickup truck. And I had no luck and eventually gave up on it and kind of forgot about it. And they pulled the truck out of the bank and, you know, I figured it went to meet its maker and we'd never see each other again. But today, when I was leaving down there from the farm, my uncle says, hey, you want your steering wheel? Oh, what are you talking about? He's like, that steering wheel off of that Studebaker you were trying to get all them years ago, which has been, you know, 21 years ago. I would have been only 12 at the time. Yeah, right around 12, 13 years old probably. He's like, here's your steering wheel. I was like, well, how, how did you get that and where did it come from? Well, after the guy pulled the truck out of the creek, they cut the steering wheel off because they knew I was after it. Why, I don't know. There's nothing fancy about it. And actually put it on top of his grain leg as a, uh, as a, steering, as a, as a hand wheel to open the grain augers up with and stuff, to open the chutes and stuff for the different grain bins. And about, I don't know, four or five years ago, maybe a little longer, they scrapped out their grain leg because he quit farming and stuff and didn't need it no more and it was pretty bad shape it was getting rotted out at the bottom and stuff uh, they used this up on the grain leg somehow they attached that shaft into the augering system and he's my uncle told me he's like when we tore that grain leg down I kept the steering wheel I was going to give it back to you was, oh, that's kind of cool you know they painted it up there to keep the weather from eating it up but it's still in really bad shape but it's it's the one that I was after all them years. <laughs> you can see where they cut it off. Uh, it's amazing some of the stuff that comes back and gets us, isn't it? So that's the story with the steering wheel. That's off a 1947 Studebaker pickup. Now, let's get to the box I know that's really going to interest everybody. These are the few pieces of electronic equipment I found down there today. And a few more of those Lafayette electronics catalogs. This one's from 1965. Pretty rough shape. And here's an Allied catalog. Again, from 1965. It's their 44th year in business and 1965. <laughs> kind of neat. Alright, well here's what I found down here today. This little item here is a Masco television booster. And uh, it's got a knob up here on top to turn the unit off. And you can select channels 1 through 6 or 7 through 13. And when you selected those channels, then you could fine-tune them wherever you wanted to have the certain channel you select then you could fine-tune it in and dial it in to exactly what you need this is a model MTB 13 and it's still got the flat twin lead on it and it's still got its power cord and uh, I was looking up inside of this when I brought it home it is a two tube unit 
Now I'll have to do a video on this and tear it apart and show you guys what it looks like inside. But it's all wood. Kind of neat. And then out there we found a few other things that I might be able to use. A couple of piano hinges. Um, that's just a box of miscellaneous stuff. Delco Remy GM. Uh, testers dope clear. Empty, of course. This is uh, tungsten products, genuine tungsten products. North Bergen, New Jersey. One repair part, it doesn't say. Oh, here we go. It's a point set. <laughs> Miscellaneous nuts and bolts and bearings. Here's the top off of the Delco box. Not sure what this was. Simonez. It's a paste wax for cars. I've heard of that before. I don't know how to properly say it though. Furniture and automobile paste wax. Uh, who knows? Okay, now here's the stuff that's going to make you guys flip. Let's see what's this? There's another Lafayette catalog from March of 1967. Okay, let's get some of this stuff out of the way here real quick. Here's the stuff you guys are really going to be interested in. And I'm saving the best for last. I found a whole box. I'm going to have to set the camera down for a minute. Let's open this up. I found this box. And in it had a bunch of repair parts. And uh, it's a bunch of control knobs, potentiometers. Some are double controls. ignition switch for something. Just a bunch of different stuff down in there. They're all Mallory controls. Ain't gonna take them all out. I'll never get them all back in. But that'll come in handy for radio repairs. And this is an antenna knife switch. I told you Grandpa was into ham radios for a while. And this was his disconnect for his antenna. Of course, the load, you know, the antenna went on the output side over here. And uh, when he'd throw the switch, you can see that this jumper's at right over to there. And then you're, you're connected. Whenever they got bad weather, stuff like that, he'd just throw that switch up and it disconnect and take the antenna offline. And I regret not grabbing it. There was a container down there that had a bunch of uh, brown porcelain insulators about that long with flag screws in the ends. And then a bunch of little white insulators about that long, about that tall, and uh, I don't know, maybe about, about that wide. They were skinny. It looked kind of similar to this, but they were white porcelain about that thick that were probably for the leads of the wires to go through so you could mount it along your house and stand it off the building. I didn't grab those. I wish I would have. But, here's the thing I'm saving the best for last. It's going to make a lot of people go gaga. As soon as I brushed this off and seen the collar of the cabinet, I knew I was dealing with something heath kit, but I didn't know what. So I started looking at it, you know, it was buried underneath a bunch of mouse poop and coon poop and good stuff. It, the box had been wet a few times, but I think this thing's completely salvageable. Um, it's got a couple different plugs here on the back. Of course, our power cord. We have an antenna connection, and I don't know if this is for a power output tube or what the hell this is for. Kind of, kind of different. I'm not exactly sure. But, let me show you what we got here. I know a lot of you guys are going to love this. And I don't know how many of these are still out, because I've never seen them before. 
This is a Heathkit transmitter and it'll broadcast on 10, 20, and 40 meters. And the gauge is for DC milliampers and it's got a driver knob that goes from 1 to 10. We have a setup for a plug-in crystal right here. Probably determine the frequency you broadcast on, I'm guessing. Here's our power on off switch. And we can direct our current to the plate or to the grid. Here's our band switch for 10, 20, 40, and 80, which it was on the 20 meter range. This is a model AT-1, by the way. And uh, here's our output. It's kind of a froze. It's going to need some work. It's froze up. And then we have our plate on or standby switch and then a jack that says key. Never quite seen anything like this before. It's pretty heavy. Some of the screws are loose too. I don't know if this thing works or not. I'm not going to find out. But That's a Heathkit model AT1 transmitter. And I said there's his uh, cutoff switch for the antenna. So, there's a few more finds from down at Grandpa's. And we're still going through stuff. We haven't even got up into the garage yet where a few more things are at. But in the following months or years, we'll get to that. Not right now, though. Go pace yourselves a little bit. Can't post it all at one time. So, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. And there'll be more to come later.